Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for coming out this morning. I'm Bill Wyatt, Executive Director of Airports for Salt Lake City. Uh, and believe it or not, it's been exactly one year since the new Salt Lake City International Airport opened. It's hard for me to believe because at the same time uh, we were opening, we were beginning the demolition of the old airport, which everybody uh, in this community knew and, and loved, and I'll have to say it's all gone. And the new SLC, the second phase, is uh, rising uh, above us, as we say. Um, we're encouraged, obviously, to see that people are traveling again and traveling safely, which is very important. Uh, the airport continues uh, to be subject to the federal mask uh, requirements. Vaccinations are on the rise, which is uh, terrific. Uh, and, you know, when we opened a year ago, I think we had about 7,000 people at the front door. Uh, today, pretty close to 20,000 people at the front door, and we've had as many as 29,000. So we're somewhere between 90 and 95% uh, percent of, uh, of normal here. Um, <clears throat> I think another really interesting fact is that uh, this last year we screened over 3.3 million bags through the new inline uh, bag screening system. And uh, the architects and engineers, uh, I think, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but maybe not, uh, suggests that the bag handling system was designed first and then the airport was designed around it. So, always a reminder that we're at the airport. <laughs> we listen to it every day. <laughs> uh, and so a uh, couple of other uh, thoughts before we get on with the balance of the program. Uh, the Canyon Art, which you see behind us, has won several uh, international awards, which we're very pleased about. And the project itself has won uh, several substantial awards, including uh, the uh, Project of the Year by Utah Construction and Design and ENR Mountain States Best Project uh, Award. So this is, of course, as we said a year ago on opening day, uh, the first and who knows, maybe the only 21st century hub airport to be built in the United States. It's a very difficult and challenging um, undertaking. And uh, what we're going to be focusing on here today is something that I think is really significant, and that is some of the key uh, sustainability uh, initiatives that were undertaken during the course of construction here and the great environmental benefits that this facility is adding uh, to our community. So uh, with great pleasure, I'd like to introduce Matt Needham with HOK, our architects of record, who will review how to build a more sustainable airport. Matt? Thank you, Bill. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a really good sustainability story uh, with this airport. And with any good achievement regarding sustainability, it takes technical innovation as well as teamwork. Uh, I'll give three quick examples of what, what we have done as a team. So the first is we take a look at, at taking advantage of the concourse solar orientation. Uh, on the north side, when we have beautiful, indirect, non-glare light, we expanded the window walls. On the south side, where you have heat and glare, we canted the windows and made them stepped to minimize the heat and glare. That simple move is kind of reflected through hundreds of different achievements throughout uh, this project. That's one example. Another is how we were able to cool the aircraft and the jet bridges. You may not realize this, but this building does that. Uh, instead of each aircraft using their own built-in auxiliary engines that provide emissions uh, to cool, uh, we have actually provided uh, cooling and, and air conditioning uh, in not just the jet bridges but the aircraft. And typically the way this is done is by individual package air conditioning units at each gate. Here we have the opportunity to provide a quadrant or four uh, preconditioned air plants, and uh, that is uh, much more efficient. Um, 
The third brief example is the bag system that Bill just talked about. Uh, seven miles of baggage. Um, typically, these belts are continuously running during the, the, the course of the day. Uh, here, we were able to install st stop-start motors and actually then reduce that energy load in times of uh, when there's not that many bags on these belts. Um, these achievements and hundreds more, um, I think, were really uh, the story of how, how we were able to make this airport uh, very sustainable. And another key to, to, to that is not just this teamwork that we had, uh, but the leadership of the team. And so on behalf of HOK, I'd like to really thank the leadership, including Executive Director Bill Wyatt, his prior Executive Director Maureen Riley, uh, the leadership of Delta Airlines, and uh, the program management team. And then finally, I'd like to thank the Office of the Mayor for uh, her direction and policy, and I'd like to introduce the Honorable M Mayor Mendenhall. Thank you. Hey team, there you are back there. It's great to see you all. It's great to be back here at a decent hour instead of uh, 4.30 in the morning as we were when we opened the airport a year ago. Um, and to see that light that you've so perfectly designed streaming in here, uh, illuminating the canyon and, and your faces here today. It's a great day at the new SLC. Um, the first impression that visitors receive besides this spectacular view flying into this valley is this state-of-the-art, incredible airport. There's nothing like it in the country. And what we're about to announce today takes us even beyond uh, the spectacular things that you see on the surface. In our capital city, we've been working to make every decision, every dollar we spend, every policy we consider through this lens of sustainability. We know that reducing our carbon emissions is so critical for not only our local community, but for our world over. And that as much as uh, mitigation and impact reduction we can do, we will. And you're standing in one of the best examples of that uh, commitment today. I'm excited to announce that the new SLC has been awarded LEED Gold certification. This news... <laughs> this isn't a surprise because our teams have been uh, working intentionally for about a decade on making sure that we'd be standing here today celebrating this. Achieving this, though, isn't a small feat. This facility is the largest LEED Gold certified airport terminal in the western United States as measured by square footage. The new SLC achieved these LEED Gold standards through, I'm going to just describe four things, but as Matt said, there's hundreds of things um, under these main tenants. Emission reduction is a big one. Waste minimization, water conservation, and renewable energy implementation. The sustainability work really began on day one of construction, even of deconstruction. And 95% of the construction waste was diverted from incineration or the landfill. 95%. That whole airport we said goodbye to, 95% of it was reused in some way. and. Uh, on the Zoom calls with Bill over the last 18 months or so, you could hear that waste being ground and pulverized and now is being laid out as a base somewhere with a future expansion probably. But it's a remarkable achievement. What's more, the airport provided 536 charging stations for, uh, to assist our airlines in transitioning their ground support vehicles from diesel to electric. I came up into politics through air quality activism and advocacy and learned that the emissions from those little tugs, those ground support vehicles, were significant. They were significant. They didn't have the kind of catalytic converters that our diesel vehicles out on the roads do necessarily. And in addition to all the other emissions that the old, old airport were cranking out, that was a significant footprint. We've now invested in making it possible for all the airline partners 
to make the transition from diesel to electric. And to give you some equivalencies, that's an anticipated annual savings of 4,000 metric tons of green greenhouse gases, or even more understandable would be the equivalent of removing 900 vehicles from the road annually. These decisions and hundreds of others have led us to this point, and I'm so thrilled that we're continuing this commitment as we uh, go through the construction of Concourse A East, the Central Tunnel, and the other improvements yet to come. With that, I'll turn things over to Lisa Stanley, who's visiting us uh, from the U.S. Green Building Council. Lisa, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Mayor Mendenhall. It's really my pleasure to be here today in person to help Salt Lake City International Airport, along with our announcements, celebrate and commemorate the amazing work that we're standing in the middle of today. I'm here representing U.S. Green Building Council and our diverse member organizations across the globe who work tirelessly to create healthy, high-performing buildings schools, homes, neighborhoods, offices, and airports through the LEED Green Building Program. LEED has been helping us transform the way we think about the places we live, work, learn, play, and travel for more than 20 years, really helping us to have a high-performing, enhanced built environment for generations to come. LEED is comprehensive and flexible. It works throughout the building's life cycle. It promotes strategies that lead to high performance in human and environmental health. It addresses sustainable site development, water savings, energy efficiency, material selection, and indoor environmental quality. LEED is a global green building program. It's the leadership standard used in all 50 states and now more than 182 countries across the globe. We certify more than 2 million square feet of office and all space every single day. Today, I am really happy to recognize Salt Lake City International Airport for achieving LEED Gold certification for this new airport. Standing in the middle of this gorgeous new construction, it's immediately clear just how successful your combined efforts were in bringing this project from conception to construction to LEED certification. I'm impressed not only by the beauty of the project, but by your ability to complete both of these large scale projects amid some circumstances that could have never been foreseen a decade ago. Your certification was finalized just in June of this year. You've been up and running for a year, happy anniversary but the planning was underway more than a decade ago. Notwithstanding a global pandemic, this would not have been an easy task. As two of the largest LEED version 2009 gold certified airport terminal projects in the United States, certifying both the terminal redevelopment program and Concourse B West represented a unique challenge. How to build on this large scale while staying on task and prioritizing health, and sustainability. As Director of Technical Solutions at USGBC, I know just how daunting this task likely was and how much pre-planning was required to bring this project to where it is today. Thanks to the guidance of your peers, consistent inter-organizational collaboration, and your own individual perseverance, we can say these challenges have been overcome. Today, I would like to call to your attention the innovative spirit of everyone who worked on this project by highlighting a few more of the technical achievements as they relate to the LEED certification. The airport work to connect to public transit, the rail that's happening out there, was recognized in LEED by earning 100% of the points available for alternative transportation strategies. Material and resources credit was achieved when more than 20% of your materials were procured locally and with recycled content. You used water efficient plumbing fixtures and that work led to meeting the highest point threshold for that strategy. 
your construction waste management leadership, as the mayor pointed out, was demonstrated by diverting more than 95% of all waste from the construction landfill. Your work on the soil and groundwater contamination efforts enabled a point in the lead rating system, but over and above and beyond that, it shows the airport's commitment to providing a clean environment for its visitors and community. Comprehensive planning and selection of those efficient HVAC systems that Matt was talking about resulted in over 35% energy savings. Really, those are just the tip of the iceberg, as any project team would know. This project was a unique opportunity to bring Leeds' core tenets of sustainability, health, equity, and resilience to the Salt Lake City community on a massive scale. As we all know, the impact will stretch far beyond Salt Lake City. Airports are unique amongst lead buildings in how far their benefits reach. During a normal year, Salt Lake City International Airport services more than 25 million passengers traveling to, from, through this beautiful area. That's 25 million people breathing cleaner, healthier air. 25 million people helping conserve Utah's precious water resources. 25 million people that have reduced their climate footprint. And 25 million people who can travel safely knowing that their best interests were in mind at every stage of these two projects' developments. And that's not to mention the impact these projects have on every on-the-ground employee who works tirelessly to keep this airport open every day of the year. The people who spend time in these LEED certified terminals will positively be impacted by your hard work and unending dedication to green building ideals. Today really is a day for celebration but we also know it's a day for looking forward. As the 800,000 square feet of phase two construction and certification work commences, I'm excited to see SLC continue to raise the bar and advance what's possible. Once again, it is my distinct honor to recognize Salt Lake City International Airport for achieving LEED Gold certification for both the terminal redevelopment program as well as Concourse B West. Now let's take a look at our beautiful plaque and give everybody a big round of applause. Well, Lisa, thank you very much. Uh, we'll take very good care of this. And we'll uh, continue to perform here because that's obviously part of the LEED Gold uh, certification. There uh, are uh, continual uh, reporting requirements, which is very important to make sure that we maintain the very high standards uh, which the U.S. Green Building Council uh, requires. And so we're uh, really proud to have this. It'll be displayed um, all throughout the airport. Uh, we want people to, uh, to know what kind of facility they're in. And I think one of the most important things I want to close with is this. We're not done yet. Um, and if you go to the end of the ticket lobby uh, down here, for example, and just look out the window, you can see steel being erected for a concourse east. You can see ramp uh, starting to appear. Underneath the ramp is the crushed stone from the old parking garage. If you look this way, you can see the central tunnel, which will eventually connect us to uh, Concourse B, and by the way, which will have a significant impact on the uh, walking distance uh, from here to the gates on the B uh, concourse. So uh, I think, uh, as Lisa suggested, 
uh, none of us really anticipated a global pandemic uh, as we were imagining the opening. We had really grand ambitions to invite the entire community to come out and experience the airport uh, before the secure area uh, was imposed and really get a feel for the place. And we didn't get to do any of that. Uh, so the mayor and many of us were here on opening day uh, standing, in my case, just on the other side of the security checkpoint, watching people who came out to the airport to get on a plane, probably not even knowing that there was a new airport uh, here and wondering if they had awakened in the wrong town uh, and try to manage their way through. Uh, and since that day, uh, beginning really within a matter of days, we began deconstructing the old airport so that we could uh, move very quickly. Uh, some interesting uh, statistics. Prior to the steel erection, 993 piles were placed for Concourse A East within eight and a half months of opening day, uh, which, as the mayor alluded to, was right outside my window. So for the first few months, uh, it was a little noisy. Um, <clears throat> we've had 188,000 square yards of apron paving uh, removed so far and 68,000 square yards of new apron paving. That's where the planes sit when they're being serviced. Uh, and we have a topping off ceremony for A Concourse East on the 13th of October. The first gates on A Concourse East are going to open in May of 2023. So we're not wasting any time. Um, I'm often asked uh, by people who know what I do for a living, when are you going to be done? And the answer really at airports is you're never done. Uh, because as soon as you complete, uh, the demand drives uh, additional activity. But for us, uh, the, the opportunity to occupy the newly constructed parts of the airport are really going to make a huge difference. And so it's with great uh, pleasure that I also announce this is our first anniversary. I'm told that the first anniversary is a paper anniversary, uh, as in um, <clears throat> a paper airplane. You'll see them right over here. You're welcome uh, to them. We're going to give our employees uh, paper airplanes. I'm also told they don't fly particularly well, so uh, I'd avoid trying to throw them over the side here. But uh, in any event, thank you all so much for coming today. Uh, it's great to look out here and see this fabulous team of Department of Airport employees, the project management team, our contractors, uh, our friends at Delta. Uh, this is. Uh, the airport is like a small city, and uh, it's really a great pleasure to uh, celebrate this with all of you. Thank you so much.